frost has lifted, and the cloud has come in, and here I am in the Ingram Valley. This is known locally as the Ingram Valley, but it's actually the valley of the river Bremish. It's called the Ingram Valley because the village of Ingram uh, is just at the foot of it. Uh, when I've just come through that to, to come to the car park here. I'm going to be going off up over Bruff Law, up to U Hill, and we'll see how the time goes. I might go a little bit further and look at some of the hill forts up there. But uh, first of all, we'll have a look at uh, the hill fort in Bruff Law. I'm following another of the walks in David Haffey's book, Walks in the Cheviot Hills. can see the, the rough direction that we'll be going in. Just looking back down the valley to Ingram village, just at the start of the valley. This is a beautifully calm January day. Just come down from Berwick, down through Wooler, and down the A697, and turned off at the signpost for Ingram and the, the National Park, the Northumberland National Park. It should be good to, to go in this without any wind and no rain, both of which we've had a lot of recently. There's a certain silence and peace you get when you're in or around a, a spruce plantation like this. It's a, it's a vibe you get nowhere else. It's lovely. Looking back down the valley you can just see the the River Bremish winding its way down towards Ingram. Looking across the hills. Interesting formation that you'll find on the way up Bruff Law. It's the remains of what it's called a sod cast. Lovely name. It uh, was originally made with sods of turf as a kind of embankment and each side was lined with stone and it just marked the boundaries between different enclosures on farms for sheep. You can see the old boundary lines running up here. They're thought to have been topped off with uh, old hawthorn trees. These sod casts are thought to date back to the 17th or 18th century and some of them were kept in good working order until even as late as 1930. Here I am, atop Bruff Law of the old hill fort around me the pile of stones that it is. There's the view of all the hills around. This is where the view really opens up. And ultimately we'll be ending up over there and then winding my way back down around the plantations back to the car park. This is the, the circular ring of stones that formed the, the hill fort at one time. makes you wonder what it must have been like in the time when this was a, a well-constructed wall around this. It's just a pile of
have tumbled stones but they're still sitting there in their normal place where they were before. But you can see the height of them. Think how impressive that must have been in its day about 2,000 years ago when it was inhabited. It's a fortified settlement. It's thought they were abandoned later by the inhabitants of that time, the Iron Age inhabitants, but resettled in Roman or British times. They might even have been expanded to start growing crops and uh, breeding animals. What's left of it really is quite impressive. It's still a sizable wall around here. Even more impressive than, than the hill fort at the top of Yevering Bell, which still has a, a large ring of stones around it as well. I'm outside the main ring of stones and there's a second outer ring. I'm just standing in the middle of. As always, you can't really get a, a great view of this from the ground, but if you have a look at it from Google Earth, it really is quite impressive from there as well. You can see the outline of the whole fort and the, the circular form it has. the other hill forts. It's way marked all the way round. Uh, it's on the hill forts trail. There's a number of these trails around. You can follow the way markers. Tell you where to go. Bridleways, hill fort trail. We'll follow it down here. just comes to an end. Sudden drop here. This is going to be fun. of another settlement here. I'll have to look into the name of this and see if I can find out what it is and put a caption on. I think these have stood here for 
for thousands of years and are still here and haven't been eroded by wind or rain or sheep. Just think about the people who used to live here at one time. arrangement. In the distance you might just be able to see the settlement that came across at the top of that steep sided valley that I turned down eventually quite a good view of it from here and you can see the, shall we call it the moat around the outside, the two remaining bits of walls. You can really get a, a good view of these markings in the landscape. I must look into this and see what they're about. I've seen something similar on Rothbury Moor. These just markings going across the side of the hill. And they go across the side of the hill and then down. Peculiar. I'm just looking up uh, Middleton Burn now. And I'm going to walk down to there. Looks like there's a ford down there that I might be able to get across somehow. Might end up getting my feet wet. We'll wait and see. Well, having taken the long route round on the Hillforts Trail, I'm back on 
the short walk that David Haffey talks about in his book. And we're just coming back towards the end of the walk again. Oh, I don't know, maybe about half a mile to a mile to go. Not far. It started off as a bit nondescript and then after the the fort on Rough Law, that was really quite interesting. Uh, it suddenly picked up after that. Really quite an enjoyable day. Back down into the into the Ingram Valley again. And find the road. Get back to the car. And here we are at the end. Back to where we started. Cars parked just behind that plantation of trees over on the right. Lovely and calm down in here. And that cool wind up on the top of the hills. But a great day for a walk. Perfect conditions. And look forward to the next one. <laughs>